Turning now to your politics, sparks flying at the big GOP debate last night. Governor Ron DeSantis really needing a standout performance, but it appears a young unknown tech billionaire, Vivek Ramazwamy, stole the spotlight. At least that's what people are talking about this morning. Joining us to discuss is Caroline Heldman, professor of critical theory and social justice at Occidental College. It's the morning after, Caroline. Good morning. Good morning, Giselle. Good to see you. <laughs> Let's start with your big takeaways. Obviously, a lot of noise on that stage last night. They seem to go after each other more than the elephant not in the room, Donald Trump. Missed opportunities, biggest takeaways, your surprises. Well, I think Ramaswamy is the biggest surprise uh, in that he drew most of the attention. He was criticized by Pence for being an experienced Chris Christie. Everyone was piling on him, and if you would think this would be a bad thing, but really, that's what you want. If you're in a crowded pack, you're eight on a stage, everyone's low in the polls, uh, this is precisely what he wanted going into this. So um, he is the big breakaway. I think Tim Scott, uh, playing Mr. Nice Guy, didn't work for him, but Nikki Haley had a decent debate as well. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's really Ramaswamy that we're talking about over the water coolers today. Uh, yeah, if there were water coolers <laughs> on social <laughs> media, I guess, that shows our generational divide, which we'll get to. Ron DeSantis, he had, uh, he needed a big night because he's second in the polls, um, and he was largely overshadowed by Ramaswamy, uh, who everybody went after. Big missed opportunity for DeSantis. What does it tell you about his campaign moving forward? I think it tells you that his campaign is not seen as important enough for the other candidates to go after him. Uh, Ramaswamy was certainly kind of a stand-in for Trump. He is the most pro-Trump candidate on that stage, which is part of why he drew a lot of the criticism. But also, he is rising in the polls. He's the only one rising in the polls against DeSantis, who is the far, uh, you know, far from Trump number two candidate. So I would imagine what we're going to see is the polls are going to shift, and DeSantis's rising star where. We thought he was a year ago. He's simply not a serious contender at this point in time in, in the Republican presidential contest, even though he's still pretty high in the polls compared to the other candidates. I think we're going to see a switch in the coming weeks. So Chris Christie, the attack dog, also seemed to be defanged by Ramaswamy. Um, and there, he did kind of show a bit of a generational divide there, too. Talk about that generational divide, because it really was front and center last night in the Republican Party being asked, are we going to be the Republican Party of the past or the future? And Ramaswamy set it up that way, right? He said, I'm the young candidate. I'm here on the stage. You might be asking, who is this skinny guy with a last name that's that's uh, a little unusual? Uh, and what ended up happening, you're absolutely right, Chris Christie went after him. He attacked him, but it fell flat. And in fact, Chris Christie drew parallels between Ramaswamy, Ramaswamy and uh, Senator Obama, right, from way back in 2008. And he was being critical of Ramaswamy, but I actually think it helped him. It set him up as, you know, this candidate who comes from behind, who not a lot of folks know about, who does a great job on a debate stage and ends up becoming the next president. So I think the attacks uh, against Ramaswamy uh, really, it, it elevated him and, and were not effective, at least in terms of Chris Christie going after him. Um, when we, and it came to foreign policy, Ukraine particularly, and Israel, Nikki Haley's foreign policy chops, her U.N. background really shined through. She attacked Vivek uh, for his positions, wanted to cut aid to Israel, cut aid to Ukraine. Did she win on that front and expose his inexperience? You know, she did. There were a couple of, of blows that landed on Ramaswamy, and I would say that that was one. Nikki Haley, by the way, had a great debate overall. Uh, I don't think we learned anything new about her, but she certainly held her own on the stage as the only woman in the crowded Republican pack. Uh, but going after uh, Ramaswamy's lack of support for, for aid in Ukraine and lack of support for aid in Israel, he really is a far right wing candidate. This is a person who called uh, the climate crisis a hoax. He actually said said that he thought that uh, Donald Trump was the best president of the most recent century. I mean, this is this is essentially a candidate who was a stand in for Trump on that stage, but even further to the to the right. Yeah, he also said he would pardon him if he was convicted. One of the most powerful moments that I saw was when all the candidates, when asked, said Pence did do the right thing by upholding the Constitution on January 6th. As far as I know, it's like the first time conservatives are hearing this on national television. Does it move the needle at all? 
I don't think so, Giselle. 50% uh, of Americans think we're making too much of January 6th as a threat to our democracy, the violent insurrection that day. Uh, I don't imagine anything will move the needle at this point if Donald Trump being indicted uh, at the federal and state level for some of his actions that day, you know, actually causes his support to increase. I think that Americans have made up their minds. This is too uh, partisan of an issue. It's too politicized of an issue for people to really be thoughtful about it at this point. Just really quickly, uh, there are a number of pundits this morning who saying that Pence really kind of found his identity again and really kind of came out swinging as a warrior. Did you think that as well? I agree. I think Pence had a great night. He actually showed that he could be an attack dog on that stage. Right. Um, counter programming with uh, former President Trump and Carl uh, Tucker Carlson. Did it move the needle at all for him? You know, I think it did. 74 million viewers for Donald Trump's, at least partial viewing for Donald Trump's uh, interview with Tucker Carlson, uh, compared to about 50 million for the Republican debate. I would say, hands down, that's a win for Trump. And he'll certainly steal headlines today when he surrenders at the Fulton County uh, Courthouse uh, later this afternoon. Um, but the indictments only seem to help him. As you know, in the polls, every time he's indicted, his polls go up and he raises more money. This is a party that in the past has been associated with law and order. Now they're calling uh, this all, it's all this uh, persecution of Trump, weaponization of justice. But two candidates said they will support him even if he, all but two said they'll support him even if he's found guilty. What does that tell you about where the party stands and where Trump stands in that party? Well, 62% of Republicans would vote for Donald Trump were the election held today. That means that if every candidate on that stage last night became one candidate, they still couldn't beat Donald Trump. It tells you that he has very effectively convinced people that he's being persecuted, that this is unfair, what is happening, the rigged system. And I think that folks who think that once he gets, you know, actually the, the difference between an indictment and a trial is going to make a difference, I don't think anything moves the needle on this. When you have such a powerful narrative, I think the more he is persecuted or seen as being persecuted, the higher his approval ratings will be. Such unprecedented times with this collision of law and politics. Before I let you go, Speaker Kevin McCarthy, under a lot of pressure, he's ramping up talks of impeaching President Biden. Um, the Freedom Caucus threatening to dethrone him unless he cuts funding to Ukraine, cuts spending, and dismisses all charges against Trump. Otherwise, we're not going to you know, pass a spending bill. Does McCarthy hold on to a seat here? Will we have a government shutdown? Well, I don't, I think McCarthy holds on to his seat. I don't think we're going to have a government shutdown. You have a small number of people who are kind of holding him hostage in the party. But it doesn't matter if it's McCarthy or someone else. They're not going to get these more extreme measures through. So, uh, you know, whether whether they're supporting this man or they put somebody else in, it, there's no advantage politically for them. So I imagine they just keep the pressure on McCarthy and he keeps his seat. I keep saying it every time I speak to you. We live in very complex times. Caroline Helmet, professor of critical theory and social justice at Occidental College, thank you so much for your vital expertise and analysis. We appreciate you.